whatever. Glowing and back to you, Dante. That, that's, that's what it's going to be. Oh, crap. Okay. Well, they also got teams wrong, which is just perfect. Yeah, this... That was a little embarrassing. All right, let's try this again. Unfortunately, this is happening. The tournament rooms do not have it set up where it's just two teams and automatically balances to two teams. And the players did not quite notice that that wasn't the case. Oh well, doesn't matter. We are able to get started. We have finally managed to get this game in. Yeah, I'm a bit surprised that Prince Reaper lost that much, but Prince Reaper's a team player. I don't know if they're really much of a 1v1 player. I'm not... I wasn't sure what to expect out of that, but yeah, they're they're out pretty quick. And, like I said, Ice is Delta. Bit of an odd map. I've shown it before. It's been one of my other casts. So you can see it's weird metal spots. Plus 1.5 in the corner. I mean, plus 1.8 what, plus 1 over here. I, don't, I guess that kind of makes sense. It's out in the corner, but plus 1.5 over here. Plus 1.27. And they have a bunch of plus 1s around. It's... Not really organized metal-wise. Not at all symmetric. Can only go in for Air Factory, which is perfectly sensible. Bakhti Dante going for Cloakabot Factory, which is a solid choice, but on this map, frankly, there is no solid choice. Spiders have been fairly powerful. Amps can be very powerful. Hovers actually won. There was a Hovers versus Amp game on this map. I think it was in the Swiss tournament. Yeah, that's right. It was a tiebreaker match. It was between... It was like Clone and Lowry or something. Or Clone and Orphelius. It was Clone and Orphelius. And that was a really nuts... That was just... I don't even know what was going on with that one. That... But that was, as I said, a... Where am I? Well, whatever. I don't really care to look at it right now. I think it was Orphelius. Anyway, clone. Why is it getting radar over to the southeast side of the map or south side of the map? Yeah, I apologize once again for all the sniffling and Kleenex. Really, kind of a bad time. Anyway, as I was saying, with so back to you, Dante, about to spot out the crane. So no, that's either air or gunship, and it is air. Ravens are just being set up. Clone had not yet built up Ravens. And getting a solo collector, which does require some terraforming. Yeah, they're getting a wall. They're building a nice little wall here. Making it difficult for Bakhti Dante to know what's going on. The crane, I believe, has been spotted, though. Might not have been. The glaives, however, going around, and Clone knows exactly where everything is. Bakhti Dante, on the other hand, just doesn't. They have an idea of what's going on on their side, but they that's not relevant right now. They don't really care. The Raven, that's what's relevant. That's that's really what matters. Not much for anything else. I mean, really, what... Stupid YouTube interface. They're at my channel. Jeez. Anyway, with Clone, they are reclaiming this. This obelisk. Got a lot of metal to it. Good choice to reclaim, but yeah, this... This map, and the Ravens have been revealed, everything's been revealed. Shot dropped on... Looks like the factory, I think. And another Raven coming in here, and it looks like another shot will be dropped onto some opportune target somewhere. Probably the Lotus or something like that. Some fairly simple target to grab. Let's see here, we have the Raven going down south. Yeah, I know, I don't feel super enthusiastic, because this map, actually, I should be feeling more enthusiastic about... Because it's actually a really, it's a pretty map. It's got some interesting setup to it. The fact that it's so weirdly asymmetric, notwithstanding, and down goes another oh, good constructor kill. And it's a clean one, too. The Raven gets out of there, no problem. I mean, this map is very asymmetric, which is, it's different. It's hugely different. It's just hard to know what to make of it because of this. I've seen spiders, like I said, played pretty well. Especially this top section. It's actually nice for recluses. And Clone... Taking the entire south side. They are they are really playing this well. 
Bakshi Taunt, on the other hand, is going to be actually not doing too badly. Glaive's coming in here. Really risky, though. These Glaives are going to die, and, well, a few of them are going to die. The load is not going to do too much. The defender is the bigger problem. Though this defender is exhausted. The defender up here just getting exhausted. Four Glaives, three Glaives. Three Glaives left. Another Lotus as well. Clone playing the normal defensive style. That's This is Clone. They That's what they do. But unfortunately for Bakhtiv Danta, a lot of Ravens have been built up so far. And that is going to make it very difficult for Clone to be taken down. Bakhtiv Danta's commander's days are numbered. If one or two more Ravens and Bakhtiv Danta's commander is dead. The factory... Once you get seven ravens, that goes down quickly. I'm a bit surprised that Clone has not been regularly knocking down these metal extractors just to keep Bakhtiv Dante even more down. And the gremlins have been built. Bakhtiv Dante responding pretty well. Unfortunately for them, the gremlins are getting killed. But here's the thing. I mean, gremlins like 2 to 1 ratio. So that got rid of a raven. I mentioned before, gremlins roughly 2 to 1 ratio will kill ravens. That was actually 3 on 1, which worked nicely. And more gremlins are being made. I mean, it's just... Clone's making air, Bakhtiv Dante's making anti-air, and it'll come down to positioning at this point. <laughs> Although Clone's also ahead economically. Like, there's no denying that. Clone is not that far ahead, though. It's almost more of a territory thing. Clone is ahead in the sense that they have this metal here pretty much for them. Even down here they kind of have. Bakhtiv Dante hasn't really taken the southeast. Clone kind of is. Clone is reclaiming a lot. And they have this constructor going around here. That's another four metal per second they're getting. Just from this reclaim. Just from this ob these obelisks. That's that's what they do. The obelisks are a fairly powerful thing to have. Also bright and shiny and glowy. But it's not a glow. It's just the sun's very bright. So it reflects very brightly and causes bloom. It's a bright map. And these first pass on Bakhti Dante's commander from the looks of it. Razor hasn't built up though. But Bakhti Dante's commander gets taken out. Not even first pass. That's the only pass needed. It looked like that was probably the second pass. No, what am I saying? I, I can't do math apparently right now. Apparently, three in the morning is not the best time for me to be doing math, as I have just learned. Because three thousand divided by eight, actually two in the morning. Three thousand divided by eight is a little below four. It's three point seven five. It's it's not. Or sorry, three thousand divided by eight hundred is 3.75. So four bombers are enough. I don't know why I thought it was seven. I was thinking it was 600 damage a shot rather than 800. Yeah, that's another point too. The hill has been used pretty well in the north side. That's really the more interesting part of Isis Delta. The south side is kind of just, it's there. It works interestingly if you have a lot of water units and it, on that note, Amphib Factory from Clone, building a few ducks, but even that's kind of tricky because it feeds out to this sea, this ocean area, which is hard to get out of. It's hard to really build in. I mean, Clone has set up the southeast. Hasn't set up the southwest, though. Has set up the southeast. So Back to You Down has an even harder time building up. Back to You Down is down by a factor of two. Building heavily defense, and their defense is unnecessary. Clone is not going for air any longer. They're building a few cranes here and there. They are not building any more ravens. They're building a lot of ducks. And surprisingly, okay, going for the radar. I was going to say, surprisingly, not killing anything. Going to go for the radar. Not going to go for the metal extractors. Back to you, Dante. Apparently not clones concerned as far as economy goes. A little bit surprising there. I am also often surprised about players not regularly attacking with ravens on the metal extractors. Just whenever the ravens are free, like constantly keeping an eye on them. At every moment, they're free finding a metal extractor and just nailing it just to give their opponent that much more time to have to rebuild, that much less of an economy, just keep hammering on those metal extractors over and over and over again, until you start seeing anti-air that gets in the way, of course, but until that point, especially peripheral metal extractors that don't have anti-air built around them, either that'll slow your opponent's expansion down to a crawl, or it'll cause them to try to expand over and over, and eventually you'll just outpace them because they'll be losing expansion, they'll be spending metal on expansion that... And I mentioned mass expansion is the answer to for air start, but it's still a bit tricky to do. You want to have a couple defenders, you, or you want to have some gremlins around. Actually setting it up properly, it's a bit tricky to do. It's not just mass expansion. You have to have a light amount of defense on top of that. And this raven, however, 
Well, that's where the defense comes in, but at the same time, that's where the ducks come in. And the position of these gremlins is fairly well known, at least a few of them. Though one of them does get a wave without getting splash damage. I guess ducks don't actually deal splash damage. But they did. I'm not gonna double check with you. I really just kinda wish it was in here. It would said it was splash or splash radius or something like that that was actually in this data. That really should be there. I'm not I'm surprised it isn't. But at this point, Knoen is basically going for the death blow. These ducks, there's a dozen or sorry, two dozen ducks. These ducks are the death blow. No defenses had been built up up to this point to actually deal with them. No warriors, no Roccos. Nothing has really been set up to actually manage ducks. Lots of gremlins, lots of conjurers. Nothing for ducks, no Roccos. So they're basically gonna have free reign. Dara's part, this, ra this, is this raise gonna go down just from the ducks alone? I don't think so. Maybe though. The conjurers go down though. That's an easy kill. That's a clean one. Nice tick usage, though. Very well done, Bakhtiv Dante. Unfortunately, no follow-up force, but still slows things down, buys a bit of time. 10 seconds to be precise. Oh, actually, 15 seconds to be precise. A couple glaives are coming in here, and another tick. This is what's necessary. Get another tick in there, and it should blow up. There we go. Very nice tick placement. Only a couple glaives left, and four ducks. Rather unfortunate. Not enough in time. Warrior is being built up, though. Though at this stage, it's really too late. I'm sorry, back to you, Dante, but you are moving on to game two and picking the map because Clone has taken game one. Transparency for minimap border? Like, what? This ish? Ugh, crying out loud. Like, how much transparency are you thinking? Like, is that good? Or. Because there should be some minimap border. Like, it should be there. Anyway, I, I know, I realize it's a minute delay, so you're not going to know immediately. I still go with this. I don't know, that roughly matches the rest of my interface, except for integral menu. Let's go with that, see how that works, if that's good. Anyway, we are moving on, and just to point out, we have... Actually, no change in the record so far. The other games are going on fairly well, it looks like... Has anything changed? Orphelius won. Oh, apparently Icons just threw in the towel after the first game. And wow, that's surprising. Okay, so good job, Orphelius. And we are on to Frozen Planets. It's the only way that map name can be said. If you find that annoying, I'm I'm sorry, but really, just just that name. I, I can't pronounce it any other way. And Black Steve Dante going for spiders. This is a map where it's justified. This map is a good spider map. Clone, on the other hand, is going for spiders as well. Justifying my mention that it is justified. Or at least corroborating that. Black Steve Dante going for some quick fleas into Venom, into well, into Weaver. Clone, on the other hand, going for map hack fleas. Fleas everywhere. And properly guessing where Black Steve Dante has set themselves up. Nice read. No reason for Clone to know that, except that that's where, I guess, they figured Batkeep Dante would go. They're exactly right. Although they do have some fleas going in the bottom, but the initial fleas went to the top. So either by luck or by good game sense, Clone put their fleas in the right spot. Now, of course, these remaining fleas should be still down here, just to know if Batkeep Dante does expand to the south. Extremely important to know. One of the fleas does go down to the Venom that had already been built. Batkeep Dante... Now, this is where we're going to see a very interesting Spider versus Spider. Our first game we saw was Spider Spider. It was Will K and Auto War, the very first game. And that was a little bit embarrassing, frankly. I'm sorry, you guys. But I don't know how entertained the audience was. Detrino, I have not seen Frozen. I'd like to see Frozen. I have not seen Frozen. Oh, incidentally, I should actually be updating this stuff. Like, who is playing and what map they're on and what game it is. It is on Frozen Planet. There we go. They're not that fun. Yeah, it's kind of tricky when most of the when the mainline units riots. Yeah, it's kind of hard to really say is that fun. Just to be quite honest, mainline riot units. Interesting idea. 
but it does lead to slightly slow games. With everything else being map hack fleas, although at this point Clone just has pretty much perfect map knowledge. Clone doesn't even have radar and frankly doesn't need it. They have line of sight pretty much everywhere. Okay, radar is always good, but whatever. In their case, they can have it. I also haven't actually heard the complete song of Let It Go because I want to see it in the movie first. Otherwise, it might just annoy me to no end and cause me to rip my own ears out. Well, okay, probably won't. Actually, I've heard a bit of it, and it's well sung. I just... Just one of those things that might grind on me. It seems like something that might get annoying quickly. Anyway, that aside, baseless criticisms of apparently really good Pixar movies aside, or Disney at least, movies aside... Probably it's just Disney, I think, actually. Anyway, baseless claims of Disney movies aside, Clone is... Well, let's see, they have a bunch of fleas. They have some venoms. The fleas could rush in to make venoms, and I'm sure Clone will know how to space them properly. Bit of a tricky thing to do, because venom splash damage is about the same radius as flea range. So you have to flee just on the outside of the splash damage of the flea, or the venom, I should say, in order to avoid having your own fleas get stunned out by it. Back to Dunn, on the other hand, going for the easy option of just going for redbacks. And stun locking this venom for the redback to kill. The flea's not coming in to deal with it, and Bakhti Dante gets an initial lead. That's gonna help too much. There's an infiltrator running around by Clone. As you saw in the game on Moon Q10X on Wednesday, Clone likes their early infiltrators with the Spiderbot factory. They really enjoy that, and they use it to great effect. Now, how exactly it works against Bakhti Dante, we will soon find out. And Bakhti Dante very quickly getting the south side of the map, getting ahead in economy, actually. Very early on. Yeah. So back to you, Dante. I'm getting the impression is is a player who really likes their their kind of solid factories. Their factories that are generally considered to work in the meta. I haven't seen much of what they do outside of meta, though. Yeah, outside of generally safe, considered meta. Pretty safe expansion coming here in the southeast, though. A couple of lotuses, well set up, well positioned. I like that. It's a good thing to do. And in the center of the map, they do have well, the Redback and Venom. Not much else, though. They are getting a lot of fleas of their own. And at this point, it's Clone going for Redback Venom, while Back to Dante going for Redback Flea. They want to get their map pack going, and it looks like they have about the same amount of map pack as Clone. Oh, they have the same amount of fleas. They have better map hack, though. They have a lot of fleas in the center of the map. Their map hack is stronger. Their terrorist control is also stronger. Their economy is stronger. Their military is only slightly stronger. It's marginally stronger. This infiltrator is the biggest problem. Like, dealing with an infiltrator is going to be a big deal. If it can actually be dealt with, it looks appears to be going for the red back. And... Bakhti Tanta just happens to be moving away just in time, and a flea will reveal the infiltrator, gets revealed, stuns out the redback nonetheless. But there are fleas around to follow up. The Venom, however, getting into a bad position, and fleas working to deal with this. But that that redback is stun locked and will soon die. The infiltrator got damaged, did not get killed, and has paid for itself effectively. By helping get rid of a redback, that's the same cost. But Stunlock Wars coming in here looks like Bakhti Tanta. Another reason why Spider vs. Spider is a rather odd matchup to watch. Because of Stunlock Wars. Whoever gets the double stun first. Stunning the Venom. I say double stun because Venom's two shot each other. To get each other in the Stunlock. But Clone does win the Stunlock Wars and ultimately does win them within their territory as well. That's the biggest deal. They get an extra 500 medal. Yeah, with the commander coming in to reclaim, they get an extra six minutes or so? No, more than that. They get an extra eight and a half minutes of plus 30 metal. No caretakers mind. They are actually accessing at this point. They need to build caretakers. But they have a lot to work from. Also, on a complete side note, that sound, the selection of the sound of the defender, I know I've heard it in Marathon. In at least one of the marathon games, I can't remember. I know it's a it's a public sound, but I've heard of one of the marathon games. It's been bugging me for a while. I'm trying to remember what it is. I keep thinking it's a platform sound, an elevator sound. 
Haven't found any map that actually uses that sound for that purpose. But I know it's in that game. Anyway, total side note, sorry. Complete aside, if any of you have played Marathon Series and know offhand where that sound is, I would be grateful if you mentioned it, either in the chat right now or in the comments when this is on YouTube. I know, it's a total side note, weird aside, weird tangent. But yeah, that's been kind of bugging me for a little while. I, I know I've heard it. I know it's in the game. I know that that particular public sound file is used in Marathon. I just don't know exactly where. So at this point, it looks like Clone actually has no fleas left. Okay, they have a couple fleas over in the south, but that's about it. Infiltrator also in the south, probably waiting until they get enough units to follow up to kill the commander. At this point, Clone, they don't know where the commander is outright, but they probably have been able to infer. They've probably seen it. And they are going... The Infiltrator is going for it. No... Oh, sorry. There is a follow-up force over here in the center of the map. Clone does still have an army. They just don't have a lot of fleas. Well, Bakhtiv Dante has gone heavily for fleas. Extremely heavily. I question this queue. And Bakhtiv Dante's commander getting hit right as it gets outside of the range. An attempt to save it from Bakhtiv Dante. Their Venoms are coming in to try to help, but will that be enough? The answer is maybe. Buy some time. 14 seconds left. That commander might be able to get away. Venom's coming in. Another Venom goes down. The Redbacks are the real threat, though. Although the Venoms do allow the Stun Launch to stay up. Six seconds, five seconds. No, this is, this is too long. The Redbacks do get their shots in. And even with the follow-up fleas, Bakhtiv Dante's commander is about to go down. And with that, I mean, Bakhtiv Dante is already way below in economy. Although Bakhtiv Dante does actually manage to get out of there. The stun lock is removed. The Redbacks are getting damaged, but they're still going to go down. They deal way too much damage. Bakhtiv Dante losing their commander, ultimately. And with that, they'll lose the Southeast soon after. Down it goes. Clone way ahead economically. And actually has been using up their... They've been building characters. They've been using up their metal excess. Bakhti Dante going for an air switch. Risky to do given the economy situation they have right now, but it's probably their best option. Honestly, going for the air switch, going for either... Probably Ravens. Ravens are a common thing to go for. And that's exactly what they are going for, is indeed Ravens. Well, going for Hermits as well. Hermits and Ravens. Interesting choice. I can see the Ravens definitely to get rid of all these units. And to possibly go to the commander, get rid of metal extractors. On the other hand, Hermits? Hmm. As I mentioned before... For cost, Hermits are great, but unit by unit, the Redbacks will win. Impies are dirt cheap, really? Impies are? Oh yeah, right, 280 metal. Yeah, I mentioned that before. Yeah, Infiltrators are actually quite cheap compared to a Redback. I mean, that's one Redback, and you basically get to stun out any unit. If you have a follow-up force, you win any individual battle. And down goes a Raven. Okay, so Ravens are bad choices. That's not surprising. I guess these forces... I was thinking more against Commander or against Metal Extractors to slow things down. Though, frankly, Bakhti Dante... Bakhti Dante has to reverse time in order to have any chance at this point. They're going to try with the Fleas, and it's going to be a Flea on Flea War here, which Clone is likely to win. Just by better positioning. These Fleas here are in a nice flank. And then, of course, the flank from the higher units. The Cavalry comes in over from the southern flank. Tears apart the basic infantry that is the Fleas, and Clone is now ready for a death blow, which they will most certainly take immediately. There is this Venom coming in here, which poses no threat. Simo spawns a bunch of extra legs upon death, but doesn't matter. Those extra legs will not save it. They will not save this base. They will not save Bakhtiv Dante, as Bakhtiv Dante will soon be eliminated within the next 10-15 seconds. Bit of a short game, not entirely surprising. And Bakhti Dante helping out! Damaging their own units, just being a good sport, you know? Making sure it's clear that, you know what, I'm just gonna help you. I'm gonna destroy my own base. And there we go, that is the surrender, the fancy surrender explosions. And with that, Clone takes it 2-0 and moves on to the semifinals, which is not really much of a surprise. But that, that happens, it is official! Moved on. Silent Shadow also beat Flaccid 2-0. Orphelius, I think, beat Icons 1-0 in a forfeit. Not really sure how that worked. Lowry naturally won 2-0 as well. So, clone and... Where is the sponge? Is the sponge here? I do not see the sponge. I do not know if the sponge is going to be having anyone fill in for them. Don't really know. Honestly, I have no idea what's going on with the sponge. Where they are, what they're doing. Why, in spite of the fact that they have been seated such that they had an hour and a half to show up, they have not yet shown up. 
And also, where will Ghost Darker and Mr. Moon are? Honestly, I think it'll just be Orpheus getting straight to semifinals with Lowry. At this point. Uh, well, we'll figure that out. In the meantime, probably gonna go to intermission. Oh, Sponge had to go. Shoot. Okay, so I don't know if we're gonna get a sub for Sponge or if it's just gonna be moving on Silent Shadow Clone semifinals and I guess Lowry or Philia semifinals. Hey, Flores is here! Awesome! Okay, I'll try to get Flores in on co-commentary duty. Should be able to get into semifinals. Anyway, in the meantime, I'll go to intermission and when I get back, hopefully we'll have Flores in. And that will be nice to have a co-commentator. Although I think it's been going okay on my own. It's always better to have a co-commentator. Never a bad thing. So stay tuned. We'll be back in just a moment, hopefully with more than just me.